take a look at a problem where we have a car taking a turn and the road surface is horizontal. In other words, the road is not banked. And the car, let's say, has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Uh, the turn has a radius of 20 meters. And the car is going 10 meters per second. Uh, how much friction do we need? In other words, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction so that the car doesn't slip? So this is an overhead view of the turn. Uh, as long as we uh, have a fraction of the turn here that has a radius of 20 meters, it doesn't have to be a complete circle. And the car is managing these, this turn, and we want to figure out uh, how much friction we need. We need a different perspective than this overhead view. So let's imagine we're standing behind the car, watching it drive away from us, and we draw the free body diagram uh, with a cross section cut through the car here. And so we're seeing the back of the car. We see the normal force up, weight acting straight down, and friction is acting toward the center of the circle, causing the car to make its turn. And so the force of friction is causing the acceleration, in this case, the car to change its velocity. We need a coordinate system, so we put positive x in the direction of the acceleration, which is toward the center of the circle. Positive y, we make vertical. There's no acceleration in that direction. So let's take a look at that direction. We write Newton's second law for the y direction. Some of the forces equal zero, since there's no acceleration. Uh, we add the forces together, but the normal force is in the positive direction. I can see that with my coordinate system here. And the weight is in the negative direction, so I have minus mg. And so the normal force equals the weight. How about in the x direction? Some of the forces in the x equals the mass times the acceleration. But in this case, the acceleration is a centripetal acceleration. And it's equal to v squared over r for uniform circular motion. So we substitute in v squared over r for the acceleration. And the only force in the x direction is static friction. And it's all in the positive x. So I just have some of the forces in the x becomes a force of static friction. Well, static friction is only as big as it needs to be, except in this case, we're solving for just before the car slips. So static friction has its maximum value. So the force of static friction equals mu times the normal force. So let's substitute that in for the force of static friction. And so now we get mu times the normal force is mv squared over r. And if you hadn't done so, you could go and then solve for the normal force. We have it over here. So let's substitute that in. And so now we have mu mg is mv squared over r. The m's cancel. So any car, as long as they have similar tires, would be able to make this turn. And so solving for mu, I get v squared over gr. And so that comes out to 0.51. Remember, uh, coefficient is dimensionless. And so if the coefficient of friction of the tires on the road is at least 0.51, then it will be able to make this turn. Uh, if you want to see if you can do this problem on your own, how about keep everything the same except mu is now 0.7 and you're solving for the speed of the car, the fastest it could go without slipping. And don't cheat. Don't just use this equation here. Start with the free body diagram, Newton's second law. See if you can derive the same relationship and then solve for V. Good luck.